All right, we've got a Bobcat. This is the R series, the T76 in the shop today. And what we're gonna do is a full service on this. We're gonna change every fluid, every filter, and go over every maintenance item that is required on this machine for what I call a thousand hour service. It's a little premature according to uh, Bobcat's recommended service intervals. But the point of the video is to just show you how all this is done. So if you have one of these machines and you're due for a service and you have any questions on how to service these items, Maybe you can reference back to this video and it might help. To help us with this, uh, of course, Bobcat did send us a maintenance item kit. Now they call this their 3000 hour maintenance item kit. We'll take a look at what's inside of there in just a minute. We are gonna do our uh, drive motors. This is our drive motor oil or our brake hub oil, basically. Uh, it's a little bit different than the old oil that we used to use. This is a mineral style oil. We'll take a look at that. And of course we are using the PG or propylene glycol coolant in these machines, which is recommended by Bobcat. Environmentally friendly, is it a must? That's nah, not my decision. We are using, of course, 10W30 Bobcat engine oil in this machine. And of course, Bobcats, this is their new VG46 cold weather or cool climate hydrostatic or hydraulic fluid. And what I like about these maintenance kits is that you can go ahead and plan ahead. You know, you can order your kits when you know you have a service coming up and you can order these from shop.bobcat.com. Anything over a hundred dollars with them is free shipping. Even their fluids, which is pretty good deal. And usually you will find that sometimes these stuff might be a little cheaper from shop.bobcat than your dealer. But um, anyways, neither here nor there. So all the filters in here, what we're looking at is, of course, our uh, air filters. We've got the inner here and the outer there. We've got our hydraulic filter. This is our main fuel filter. And we also have an inline fuel filter on these R series. And even the M3 series um, have these inline fuel filters. Comes with our case drain filter, of course, engine oil filter. This is our hydraulic charge filter that goes on our fan. And of course we got a couple breather caps that uh, we also need to change out on this. So the only filters that we're missing on this, because th this is kind of more of the fluids type maintenance kit, is like the cabin air filters, the fresh air and the recirculation filters. So those would have to be ordered separate from these maintenance kits. So we'll start this hydraulic service underneath the cab of the machine. So I went ahead and raised the cab of the machine on these um, R-Series. These are the, the, the cab bolts are outside the machine, so we just have a three-quarter nut on there, just pull those off, and then we just lift the cab up by hand. And down here, we'll find, I'll show you, we'll take a little closer look, is of course, right here, we've got our hydraulic tank, but all these R-Series have a drain hose for the hydraulic tank. So we're just gonna pull that drain hose out, kind of run it through the frame here and into our pan. Now we can uh, pull the bottom pan off right here. Underneath this fuse box, we just got a couple nuts. We use a 15 millimeter, take those off, and then that uh, drain pan or this center plate will kind of just slide out. And then we can just you know, drain right up underneath the machine if we want to. But I usually just put my drain plug inside the machine because it is lower than the hydraulic tank, so everything will drain out into the drain pan right here. So on this machine, they just kind of rolled it up and zip tied it to the side of the frame here. So uh, this is not a reusable zip tie, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. That'll allow us to pull our drain hose out. And then I'm just gonna kinda just run it through the frame here. And just kinda put it right into our bucket. So you can see it's not the fastest drain. It will take some time, but that way we can move on to other maintenance items while that's draining. And we're just gonna let that drain. We're gonna come around to the back of the machine and we're just gonna go ahead and do our fan filter right here. You can see I just got a this is just an old oil bottle that I just cut out and just use it a drain pan. Since perfect right on top of the valve cover. Set that in there and then I'll take a little bit of this clean oil and we'll just rub around the gasket here of our new filter. Just hand tight on that. 
And now that our hydraulic oil is done draining, we're gonna get back here to this filter here. Now this is a case drain filter. You're not gonna find this on the rubber tire machines, only on the track machines. I mean, I say that, but for some reason, it seems to me like the very early rubber tire machine serial numbers, like the very first R series had this filter on the tired machines, but, but not anymore. So you're only gonna find this filter on the track machine. So uh, it'll have the same case drain block as a wheeled machine, but no filter on the wheeled machines. So this one's kind of tough to do without making a mess, but I'll show you what I do. So I just cut the bottle out of another, you know, one gallon oil uh, bottle, you know, just cut the bottom right out of it. And I just slide it right underneath that filter there. And now we could, um, the, you know, this head and everything has a bunch of oil in it. And now the, the, there is a little bit different procedure in the service manual, but like, again, this is how I do it. Um, of course we could just, you know, spin that filter off, then oil's gonna drill, you know, uh, drip all down the filter. Then you're gonna get oil all over your hands and stuff. So no big deal to a lot of people, but to me, I don't like that. So what I like to do is take a little self-tapping screw and we're just gonna drill a hole right in the bottom of this filter. And that's all it takes. We just punch a little hole in there and we're just gonna let that system drain out into our little catch pan here. And while that's draining, we see our little, um, our hydraulic tank breather cap up here. I like to just cut this zip tie again so I can kind of just get a little better access to this hose. Uh, it doesn't have a vented cap anymore on the hydraulic tank like we used to. Now we've just got a separate vent here and it's important that this tank does vent properly. So that's why we want to change out this cap is just kind of a routine maintenance item. So this is something else we have to kind of plan for on this case drain filter because it does drip a lot of oil. So I use a pretty big catch pan, but it's almost full. So I'm just using my syringe here, or sometimes we just use a little pump and we just put this in a, uh, just another little catch pan, just to kind of transfer that oil out of there so we just don't make a huge mess. So I'm keeping an eye on this case drain filter. I mean, it, a lot of oil is coming out of there and I've had to uh, suck it out, you know, with my syringe uh, several times. And what I'm doing is just sucking it out and then putting in another oil bin uh, right down here. And then uh, just take that and dump that. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that and just keep sucking it out as necessary. Because again, that thing just will not stop pouring oil. And that's the hard part when changing that filter, just pours oil all on the bottom of the machine and makes, makes a huge mess. So we're just trying to stay on top of that. But while that's draining, we're gonna move on to the main hydraulic filter up here. So what we're gonna to use to take this hydraulic cap off is a 15 millimeter. And I'm just gonna use my flathead screwdriver to kind of pry this up. I mean, there's no real good way to do it, but this is how Bobcat recommends doing it. Now I'm taking this filter head up real slow because it is slanted a little bit. What happens is oil will just pour out the front of this if we're not real careful. But if we kind of break this seal, the oil will drain down a little bit. Kind of help from making a mess, but we got to do this real slow. So when I, when I crack this hydraulic cap, this is draining through the case drain uh, manifold. So I'm just slowly going to pry this up and then watch what happens to the drain, you know, where we're draining the oil there on the filter. See, it comes out a lot faster. So I'm basically just, I'm pointing this out because this can be a very messy job. Um, I, I guess, you know, the, the, the more we can expect what's going to happen when we're doing this with this, you know, hole uh, put in the bottom of this filter. 
yeah, just expect it to pour out a lot of oil and be ready for it. I'm trying to come up with a better system for this, but um, right now I think we're going to screw a fitting into the bottom of the filter, a little barb fitting where we can actually put a hose on there and run it into an external drain pan. That might help a little bit. So um, now I'm just going to let the cap just kind of pull back down. The vacuum will kind of pull it down and it'll slow that down while we kind of siphon some more of that oil out of that drain pan. So I'll just do that until we get it completely drained out. So finally got that oil to stop leaking through that case drain filter where we drilled that hole. That was just a lot of oil, even after draining the, um, the hydraulic tank, but we still managed not to spill any oil. Um, I guess I don't like this technique. It seems like it worked for me before, but even after draining the hydraulic tank, yeah, there's just a lot of oil. So anyways, we got that taken care of. Just be prepared for that. Um, when we go to change that filter. So here's our filter cap. We'll pull it off. And I'm just going to use a little oil absorbent pad here. And I've got a bucket over here on the side. We're just going to kind of pull this filter out and use this pad to transfer it into my tank. And so our new filter does come with new O-rings for the cap. So that is something that we want to get changed out. And then just using some clean oil, we're just going to lubricate these O-rings on the cap. And here's our new filter. It also has an O-ring up here on top that I like to lubricate with a little clean oil. And that'll help us get it in this filter head. Now it only goes one way because of this notch right here on the side. So we have to line that up in our cap. And that oil helps it kind of slide up in that cap just a little smoother and hold it there. And then we can just drop this right back down into our canister. And now we can see that this O-ring has to be pushed down in there. So I'm just gonna use my impact and we're just gonna slowly tighten each screw a little bit at a time until it pulls that o-ring down into the canister. So moving on to the fuel filters, what we got to do is get this big filter. Cause like I said, we've got two uh, fuel filters. We got the main filter, then we've got an inline filter. Um, I just, you know, you can put a little hose on this drain here. What we want to do is just drain some of this fuel out of the filter. So again, when we loosen the filter with um, the filter wrench, we're not uh, spilling fuel, you know, all down the sides of the filter. So I just like to drain it from the bowl here, just using my little form of funnel down into a pan. And then you gotta get this glass bowl off. So I haven't found the wrench to fit this bowl yet. And you have to be careful because sometimes they're really tight and you don't want to crush it with your um, you know, filter pliers or wrench or whatever and actually break that glass bowl or I say glass, it's, it's plastic. So, and even Bobcat, I kind of checked with them and, and they don't have the tool for it. It's funny, they sell the filter but they don't sell the tool for this bowl, so no big deal. I'm just going to let this drain out for a little bit and then we'll put our filter strap on here. And what I do is I put my filter strap on the bowl and I break it loose first. And then once it's loose, I'll come up here and I'll break the, uh, the main filter loose. And sometimes these are really, really tight and hard to get off. That's why I like using a filter strap. 
And now using a filter strap, see I'll wrap it around the glass bowl first. And we'll get it loosened up. That that's I don't know, this is the best way I've found to do it without you know possibly damaging that bowl. That seems to work out pretty good. So now that we got that loose, what we can do is just come up here on the main filter and use this strap as well. I promise you, you will, you want to get a filter strap for these, especially on the excavators. Good Lord. Now you can see why we use a strap. You see how tight that was? I don't know if they're just not lubricating the seal from the factory or what the deal is. It'll probably drip a little bit, so I'm gonna put another oil absorbent pad kind of underneath this filter head. And then we're gonna, you know, our new filter is gonna come with the new O-ring and, um, you know, we're going to get that replaced, but I'm going to clean this filter head. Now don't use brake clean because it does melt these, you know, and they get real foggy. Um, I just use like just a light spray soap and everything. And then I blow this out with compressed air, make sure it's real dry. There's no water or anything in there, but that's what I like to use is just soapy water to really clean this up and make it, uh, get all this dirt and everything out of there. And that'll kind of help avoid contamination as well. Now that we got our big filter out of the way, what we've got back here is our inline filter and it's held on with a worm gear clamp. So I like to just take that whole uh, worm gear clamp, just completely take it off. And uh, it slides up over a little. Yeah, either way it's a pain. That's why I just like to take it all the way off. Once we get that clamp out of the way, we've got a little squeeze clamp down here at the bottom of this filter. And at the top of it, they've got another worm gear clamp. So let's see if we can get this one squeezed and down out of our way. Okay, and then for this top hose, what I like to do is I just like to just pull the whole filter out with this top hose on it. So on this little blue locking clip, just got a little lock on it. We just pop that lock out and then we can push in on the lock and the fitting will just pop off. kind of get to this filter. So when I take it off the bottom hose, so right now nothing's leaked, but when I take it off down here, it, it won't come up out of this hose, but it will drain out of the filter. So what I like to do is just uh, pull it out and just try to put my finger over the bottom of it real quick. So right there at the end of it. No. Oh. There we go. Now we have to just hold the fuel in the filter till we can get it into our tank or into our drain pan. All right, we got our inline filter installed and no big deal with that. It, it is directional, but the fittings are different sizes. So like the hose on each end is different sizes. So you can't mess it up or get it in the wrong direction. It only goes one way. Now we'll put in our main fuel filter. We can see we got this bowl cleaned up. I mean, it looks like brand new. It looks really good. It's really dry, really clean inside. And you'll notice there's no fuel in it. Now this has an electric lift pump on this system. So on these, well, really all uh, tier four final 
engines, we don't want to pre-fill the fuel filter. I know I've said that many times before in my videos, but it's imperative that we don't because we want to avoid getting contamination down inside the filter, which can pump directly to our uh, high pressure pump and into our injectors. So we put these on dry. We've got an electric lift pump that uh, will you know, fill it up and bleed the air out of it. This is self-bleeding system. So nothing to worry about on that. Just start the key, let it run for a minute or two, or not, not the engine run, but just let the fuel pump run for a minute or two and it'll fill itself up, prime itself, and it should fire right up. And these are just hand tight. I just get them, you know, that's all we need to do. And with the fuel filter done, we'll just go ahead and knock out these air filters real quick. We just pull this little tab out and give a slight little twist on that cap and we'll pull the lid off. So that's one thing that we are also going to look at is the issue with all the dirt inside of these air filters on these machines. Um, that's probably one of the biggest complaints that we have Bobcats got going right now is how much dirt these filters are holding. Go ahead and get the main element out of the way. Now I've just got a damp rag here. I'm going to go ahead and put inside this housing and just pull out as much of this dust as I can before I pull this pre-filter out. This pre-filter is our last line of defense as far as getting dust into the engine. Okay, now if that's clean, we'll go ahead and pull this inner filter out. And you know, it looks really good, but I don't know, for me, there is some dust right down here on the bottom of it. Kind of odd. But like I said, this is the last line of defense. I always change the inner and the outer at the same time. And it, it's not always, don't always have to do it. But one thing to notice on these is this is kind of a gear shaped filter, another proprietary type thing that Bobcat does. But these are a lot cheaper on the R series. I mean, we're talking less than $40 for the, the outer filter. And I don't remember what the inner filter is, but much cheaper than our M series. So that, that kind of makes it a little easier to, I guess, accept or um, change these out because price-wise, it's a lot cheaper. But this one's really heavy. It holds a lot of dust. So you kind of got to line up them little splines to get these in there. They are tight. But once you get it lined up, it'll slide right in. There we go. And now the outer. And I dumped all the dirt out of the cap. We can put it on. We want our little duck bill, we call it here, to kind of face down. So we want to clock that, put it on, do our little twist and lock it in. So as long as that's facing down, we're looking good. So one of the things I can't stand on these R-Series machines, or really all the Doosan engines, is that they put the filter kind of at a, a vertical position so it's facing down. So whenever we go to these oil changes, um, we back that filter off and it just pours engine oil all down the side of the motor. Now they try to put a little lip on the side of the engine here, but what happens is it, it doesn't catch that lip. There, there's no seal between that little lip or little drain thing and the black of the engine. So when you loosen the filter, it just follows the, you know, the neck or the filter housing down and it just gets everywhere. It's just a damn mess. You gotta reach all the way down there and around. So what we did is we got our proprietary Tetrad group actually designed this um, remote oil filter housing and it actually uses the original Bobcat filter. So this keeps us from having to reach way back here and change that filter because this guy changes his oil a lot more than what's recommended, so we just make it a lot easier to do the oil change like this. There we go, so we can use our pan and we can put under here and we can back this filter off. And we can see that it's gonna just drain right down into our pan, okay? So that's one option. I'm gonna tighten this back down and show you a different option. And the reason that um, I put it in here sideways and not straight up and down is because of that. See, we, we drain it straight down. We won't get any oil down the um, oil filter. We don't get any oil uh, all over our hands and everything. It just drops straight into the 
uh, funnel or whatever, or drain pan, I guess, whatever we use, but we can also use a form of funnel like this and it'll just go down into our drain pan. So now let's look at that option. Yeah, see now we're coming down our form of funnel. So that's just, it's really easy to not spill oil all inside of our engine bay with this remote oil filter kit. Now th this is a prototype, but we will have these available here shortly. Uh, as soon as we get um, our brackets and our hose and everything in production, we will uh, have those available on the website. And just a little oil around the uh, gasket on the new filter. Easy as that. So we're getting close to being done here with our service. We just got one more filter to change and that is the fuel tank, the breather uh, cap right here, just like we did on the hydraulic system. Uh, we've also got a fuel tank breather that we will change. So this is really stupid. Um, yeah, it, it hits the frame right here. So this is part of the service. I go to screw it out and now it hits the frame here. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do at the moment to get this changed out. Let me, uh, let me see what I can come up with. Well, let's get our new cap. So I got the old one out. I mean, what the hell with these engineers, man? What, a, I don't know. I just took my pry bar. I put it in behind the tank here and I can move the top of the tank enough to uh, with my pry bar to get that filter in. So yeah, how stupid is that? I shouldn't have to pry on the tank that hard to get that filter out. <laughs> I mean, uh, how much more engineering would it have take just to move that bong over just a little bit and put it just, just out from underneath the frame rail? That's crazy. So we are getting close. Now we gotta just drain the engine oil. We got the antifreeze and we still got the final drives. We gotta do our, I'm sorry, I keep saying final drives, the drive motors to do. Um, so, you know, on the later serial number, they, on the early R series, they used to have the drain hose like all the Bobcats did from, for many, 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 many years. So the later R-series serial numbers do not have a drain hose. They put a bigger pan underneath, or a bigger cover, I guess, a bigger hole in the bottom of the frame. We take that bottom cover off, and then we get a 7 8 wrench, and we actually take the plug out of the oil pan now. So it's a little more messy, but it actually drains the oil much faster. So it's kind of a give and take. I prefer the hose because I like to pump out of the hose. But in this case, uh, we don't have the hose. We're going to have to drain it from underneath. what I did is I got the drain plug loose so now I'm going to come over the top and pull the drain plug out. Now we'll top it off with our finest premium Bobcat 10W30 engine oil. So we're about nine quarts on this machine. So two of these one gallon bottles and about an extra quart now that we have our remote oil filter housing, it does hold a little oil. Um, another advantage of that oil filter housing, uh, the remote, is that it holds oil. Um, so when you start the machine, it, it gets oil to the engine and up to the turbo a lot faster because it's actually full. So when your engine sits, or your oil filter sits at a vertical position, there is no anti-drain back valve in these Bobcat filters. So overnight, all the oil drains out of that filter is completely dry when, um, when you start it up the next morning. So now we're actually a little bit lower and we hold oil. So it, instantly when we start the engine, we get oil pressure a lot faster. So now we're about to service the drive motor. We're almost done with the service here. Um, so we are putting a mineral oil. There's two types of drive motors, or uh, yeah, basically on the 
So two types of drive motors on the Bobcat skid steers. None of the skid steers use a planetary. So in here, we've got an outer brake disc, an outer um, yeah, brake section in the hub here. And we're using a mineral oil to lubricate the brake discs. Now that is different than this style drive motor, which, you know, we use that high quality as a clear bottle, as a um, very high quality synthetic gear oil that we put in here. And then what we're doing is we're lubricating this outer bearing where the brake disc on this style drive motor is uh, lubricated with hydraulic oil. So that's kind of the difference. So I just take my little drain pan here to do this. We just put our two plugs at nine o'clock, or I'm sorry, at 12 o'clock and six o'clock. And always remove the top plug first. And the reason is, and I've said this several times in some of the other videos, is I at least take it out and relieve the pressure because sometimes there's a lot of pressure in these brake hubs. And what happens is if you remove this bottom one and you got pressure in there, it's going to blow oil all over you. It's kind of a mess. So, and I've just put this top plug back in just to slow down that, um, how fast that oil comes out. So we'll get this drained out and refilled. And that's all there is to it, to these hubs. Now we've got to flush the cooling system, and I'll admit I have not done the cooling system on an R-Series yet. Now I've pulled coolant hoses and stuff like that and made a mess, but if I'm out in the field, I don't want to spill coolant everywhere. So I'm going to experiment with this one, see how we can do it without making a mess, because they don't put like a drain valve on there. They do. We, we need to take this cover off, just three little quarter turn screws, get out of our way. <clears throat> and we've got this lower cooling hose right here that we got to pull the clamp off. So what they want you to do is use some hose pinch pliers, pinch off this hose, pull this clamp, pull the hose off this fitting, use a piece of three quarter heater hose to put onto that fitting and then drain it into a drain pan. Now that's hard to do when there's, you know, over, you know, head pressure coming down on there. As soon as we take that off, it's going to blow coolant everywhere. And I guess it's not that big of a deal if you're in the shop, it's just going to drain out, you know, down to the bottom there into your pan. But I'm going to try to do this without spilling coolant everywhere because in the field, we don't have access to pressure washers and such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Milwaukee pump and just using a little five gallon bucket here. I'm going to suck off as much coolant, you know, through where the radiator cap is. I'm going to pull out as much coolant as I can off the top. And that'll kind of make sense here in just a minute. So I've got my hose pinch pliers installed on the hose. I'll get a little light in here for you. I had to spin my clamp around. That was kind of a pain. They had it facing straight up. So there's not a lot of room to get that spun around, but we got the clamp lined up. And what I've got is I've got my vacuum cleaner. I've just got this cheap little stainless steel um, vacuum cleaner from Walmart. And it's only used to pull vacuums on like cooling systems and hydraulic systems. So I don't have a filter in there. And sometimes it does pull some fluid up there in there. But that's why I went ahead and just drained some of the fluid from the top so I don't suck a whole lot of coolant into my vacuum cleaner. But what that's going to do is, in theory, that's going to pull a vacuum on the cooling system so that when I take this hose off, a bunch of antifreeze doesn't rush out and that'll give me time to put my hose on and get it into a suitable container to drain. So let's see how well that's going to work. That worked exactly how I tended to. We didn't lose a drop of coolant. We got our hose connected and now we're draining into our bucket. So we'll just wait for a while. That kind of sucked because you can see I had to twist my hose down there with those hose pinch pliers on it. Um, 
it's just a short hose. There's not a lot of room to get it out of the way, but we made it work. I think this is gonna be a nice, clean, easy way to do it. As long as you got a small sacrificial vacuum cleaner you can use. Well, that's it for the full service on this machine, which I call it a thousand hour service, but a lot of this, like the cooling systems, like good to 1500 hours and such. So I'm just a little ahead of schedule on this, but again, that's how we do everything. I do have a better system for the hydraulics um, for draining that system, but we didn't show it in this video, maybe in another one. We'll, we'll try to figure that out and make that just a little bit easier. I mean, it went smooth, it wasn't bad, but we could have done better, so. Anyways, other than we got the cooling system, you know, filled up. So other than grease, adjusting the tracks, checking the belts, and just doing a general once over on the machine, we're all finished up. Thanks for watching.